So clearly, the next Bruce Lee can't fight. Hey guys, it's your favorite Mexican ground karate hobo here. And now that the dust has settled, let's discuss the DKU versus Bradley Scott fight. So I watched opinions from other YouTubers, uh, martial arts journey being one, one of them, and uh, I strongly agree with him, so let's dive deep into it. First of all, you gotta give DKU some respect. I mean, he went in there facing a bigger, stronger, and more experienced opponent. However, his inexperience is clearly shown throughout the entirety of this fight. Running away up the ring now. Just look at the size difference between these two. Turning the back of his head towards Brad. Deny. Constantly clenching in order to save himself because he's so gassed because his cardio conditioning is so poor. Oh. He still. looks tired he's now. He looks tired. He's, yeah. tired. he's taking a lot of punishment. It's one thing. You really get a sense of how physical and he's solid on his feet still. Mm. Get on your bike, circle up. Never mind the fact that he's falling around everywhere. The catch weight. That he like cannot. he's giving up yesterday. His yeah. punches will still be very powerful. Yeah, that's the thing. And he's, he needs to get out of that corner. Ooh. Possibility of. It's a very real possibility. But one thing does seem odd. Martial Arts Journey point this out very well. The commentators seem very biased, as it was clear that they were always pointing out uh, DKU's injury. Saying that he's got a spine injury and an arm injury. DK also told me that he has a bit of a spine-like injury uh, problem, back, yeah. like a disc problem, and he also has some nerve problems. And he actually talked to like two doctors who actually advised him against this fight. That that he... right? I broke my back. What do you mean by that? You my broke back, back is broken. What, a, a vertebrae or, or well, what portion? Spinal. Now this is one thing, you know. Uh, if you know you don't have a good fight camp and you know you're injured, why take the fight? Is it because you have to prove something? You're gonna prove something very poorly. But it, it was so biased. It just looked like they were painting this picture. All right, to make him seem somewhat heroic and brave. At this point, anybody who doubted DK up to this point and said he was a charlatan or a fraud or any kind of were trying to make those kinds of accusations, they would have to eat their words. Just this, the courage that he's shown in taking this fight and showing up and putting on the performance that he has, even up to now, I think he can, he can be very proud of himself. I don't know if it's just to maintain his following so that they know, like, oh no, he was injured for that fight, yada, yada, yada. At the end of the day, like it felt like things were just set up in a certain way so that you know this narrative could be uh, used so that he doesn't f lose his following. But the funny thing is, everything that he demonstrates and teaches was not shown at all. In, through the entirety of this whole fight. Look at the top. He just ended up throwing wild punches, which looked exactly nothing that he te like he teaches. Traditional martial artist. That is deep. What would you say? He was active as a fighter. And you know, people are gonna go like, oh yeah, no, but he survived. So he proved a point. Like, no, it doesn't prove a point. Brad was, what? If I'm not mistaken, had a two-week fight camp. He's a retired MMA fighter. I mean, that's not enough time to prepare for a fight that was taken under short notice. And that is an important thing about this. Taking a fight on short notice, and it still looked like Brad played around with the guy. This is something that we need to be clear about. He was toying with him. Or it looked like he was toying with him throughout the fight. Even though that DK was hugging it out. And causing some visible frustration. 
Yeah, you could say DK landed some punches, like what, six punches throughout the entirety of the fight? Throughout the whole six rounds? That's pathetic. Like, you can be so outclassed in boxing, right? You can still land a couple of punches on your opponent. It's very possible. You can be facing the best in the world and you can land six punches or you, you can land a few punches but they will at the end of the day be meaningless. So what happens from here? Does he use these excuses of his injuries and you know the clear bias from the commentary to you know paint this picture that you know ah uh, no he's an older guy he's never fought before he was injured and he still put up a fight to prove his point. It doesn't. It just actually shows how inexperienced he is. So we can literally conclude that DKU does not know how to fight. And try and tell me otherwise. And you can go on about like, yeah, no, it was a boxing fight with rules. Uh, DK teaches self-defense where, you know, there are no rules on the streets. Like, that doesn't matter. That guy can't even throw a punch. Doesn't even throw a punch like the way he demonstrates his punch. So at the end of the day, all I can suggest is let's get the two most professional non-fighters they are, Logan Paul and DKU. We just put them in the ring and we enjoy the schlock that it's going to be. But what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comment section below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more of my content. Thanks guys for tuning in. Have a lovely rest of your day and until next time, keep safe.